All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, potential for demo day. And uh, I'm still isolating from fear of COVID and stuff like that, which is why we're here in a Zoom session. But um, there is an opportunity for a demo day on Friday evening of the last week of class, the SCIS showcase, which will be in the IMRC building. A lot of people are requiring their classes to go to it. I don't know how I could do that since I won't be there to actually collect attendance and so forth. And um, I know a lot of our games here don't end with like a complete full video game play session because we've been more interested in implementing kind of advanced topics like procedural terrain and haptics on IO devices and, you know, other kinds of things that aren't necessarily ending in a final game that's glitzy and has a lot of things to do in it. So I'm not making it required, but would anyone like to showcase their game at the Friday evening of the last week of classes, IMRC SCIS showcase? Because if you do, I need to uh, inform Karen of how many seats I need for you, you guys. I'm going to select people from my 312 class who have good full playable games. Uh, since that's been more their emphasis. But if any of you would like to be there, uh, Matt says he's busy graduating. Yeah, Professor, I'll be doing that for my capstone group. So I don't know if I'll be able to do this okay. for this class. Well, I'm, I'm not requiring it. I'm, at, I'm offering it as an opportunity. And, and it won't affect the grade at all. This is on the 6th, correct? Uh, if that's the last week of classes? It's the last week of classes. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. in the evening. But, you know. Sorry, just to clarify, do you mean, like, when you say the last week of classes, do you mean before finals week or of finals week? No, I, it's before finals week. Okay. It's the last week of classes. The day Thanks after, two days after that. main day. Forrest, you're saying you thought it was the 29th? Is that that's the Friday of last week of classes? Yeah. 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 So I, I, I again, it it's up to you, and I don't need a decision right now, but I'll need a I need a decision by Friday tomorrow to inform Karen of what kind of resources I need, how many seats I need for people, uh, and I will encourage you all to go to it but i'm not requiring it because i'm not going to it fear of COVID. do you know what that might look like like uh i guess would we set up our laptop so they could play the game or yeah that, okay. that's the easy route the hard route is that you require a pc with unity installed in the site and there there apparently are some pcs but getting unity installed on in them is going to be a hoopla. So if you can do it with your laptop, that, of course, is the chosen route. Or if you've got your phone and you want to, you can, you know, let people touch your phone. I'm not sure I'd want to do that in the environment of COVID. But all right. So uh, anyway, that's that's something and I need to know by tomorrow because I have to tell Karen. So if if you feel confident and want to show off your game. And there are some that, you know, this portal game that, uh, who, who's got the portal game story, right? That's, yeah, that's me. And, and you, yours is clearly the most visibly uh, complete of the game so far and, and has <laughs> one of the most interesting mechanics that, looks glitzy. I mean, you know, a procedural terrain is really hard to do and it takes a lot of coding. Uh, but what do you end up with? You've got something that you can walk across forever. And and that's cool. And, and I really like it. But, uh, you know, in terms of 
glitz, the portals definitely win. Um, and that's no judgment on the rest of you either. That's just that he picked a cool topic. So let's let's start with our reports. Uh, and we'll start alphabetically with Donato. You're up. And uh, you need share screen. I got to yeah. press a button here. Okay. All right. It should work. Okay. So um, there's been a lot of stuff this week. So I haven't had a ton when it comes to mechanics, but I've been working on just really quickly. I made a second boss because I want to make sure I have three. I haven't made my third just to make it so it's more random, but I thought I'd just show off a sprite. He's just like a an ogre guy. Uh, I just thought it'd be fun to make a big guy. Um, he looks, he gets drooling and realizes he's drooling. I thought that was funny. Um, so I made, I made that. Um, he's definitely going to be like the, the biggest boss when it comes to like one of the three that you can get when it comes to like health and just pure strength. Um, in my game, I also uh, made a main menu and a death screen. Um, like I said, it wasn't, it's not much like coding stuff that I focused on just because I haven't had a lot of time this week. So I just made a quick desk, uh, desk screen if it loads. Um, if I just go to okay. it. Cool. Uh, yeah, it's just like a very simple, I mean, you can't see right here because of the way my screen's set up, but it's just a very simple like try again and it will bring you back to the main menu. Um, if you do click retry, which I have here, if I maximize on play. I just made this sprite background and stuff for the main menu. Um, Have you encountered the missing mouse issue? The missing mouse issue? Yeah, Unity, some of the characters or something in Unity constantly turns off the mouse, hmm. uh, the mouse cursor. And so often when you transition from one scene to another, the uh, of course you're using the the mouse cursor throughout your game right yeah yeah so that's probably not an issue for you there is a way to turn on the mouse cursor that lets you click buttons I, i've had a number of people with the the death or win scene they go to and it's got some buttons and you can always press escape and that makes the cursor reappear but telling your users to press escape in order to make the mouse cursor reappear is kind of a pain in the butt. But yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just have, it's a simple, just quit. If you quit, it's, I don't, obviously I can't quit out of the game right now. So I just have a debug uh, telling me, but then if you play, it will bring you to the, the map, which, uh, yeah, there it goes. It still does. Um, and then if I click this, it will bring me to the fight uh, or it should, which it does. I do have a glitch I've noticed where it's hard to show off because um, it takes a lot of time to get to the point. But if you saw on that map there, um, I still got to figure it out. So on the map itself, I can't really show it off at the moment. Let me just see if I can. Uh, so if I clicked um, this, this node here and then went to the next fight, I have this glitch where uh, it creates a def the default health bar um, that I have on my screen. Uh, if I go to my enemy fights, uh, I don't know what this uh, error is, but don't worry about that. Um, so I have this default bar here and it will, for some reason, it keeps that one there when I go to the second fight. I have no idea why. I think it's just the way I set up the code where it automatically fills that information in. Um, so I'm either going to have to figure out that bug or just take the hard work and just manually assign the HUD and like actually fill it in to the characters. I just, I took a, I, it was from a video I watched because I thought I was thinking at the time I was going to have multiple characters to select, but uh, I changed my mind because that's like a lot of uh, work and I don't think I'd have time for it. Um, but yeah, I think from now on, I'm just going to focus on just finishing up the combat because we don't have actually a ton of time. So I'm just going to focus on you can play it from start to end. You can get to the boss. We'll see what I can get done from there. But that's uh, pretty much it this week. Okay. Um, the one simple way of dealing with uh, what comes up in what scene. Oh, you're trying to carry something forward, right? You're carrying a health bar that's already got some. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
it's so it should be where is it in my manager it, it has the defaults like rows data which is just like it's just the row itself um, which has all this stuff in it and it automatically fills in the information and then spawns the next row uh, if I can find the script I don't know which script it's in because I will they're all like intertwined with each other of course. Um, I think it's in my uh, U manager for the UI we'll see if that comes up but it should spawn in like the correct amount of rows based on the characters however for some reason when you go to the second fight it still keeps that first one it doesn't replace it and i don't know why um i don't know if this is the right one uh this might be it so yeah it just it takes whatever the current character is and all their data and their abilities uh this is filling out the ability window that's not well, it's one of the scripts. It does something similar to that, where it takes the current character and fills out the information. Um, but yeah, it's just being weird. Okay. Well, good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we are nearing the end of things, so uh, you you. It it yeah I I have no advice for you on that I, I don't yeah I without just, looking I look you know the, I'll look at your code and see if I can figure it out but uh, I think I'm just gonna have to manually put them in uh it, I think it's it's a nice fancy thing doing it but I think I'm just gonna have to actually just place like here's that person's health bar here's theirs and here's theirs and so on and so forth um. But yeah, because we're running out of time, I had to scrap a lot of the ideas that I thought I was gonna have in time just kind of if you could, nowhere. if you could make it a don't destroy on load kind of thing hmm. so that as you moved through the scenes the various characters health bars were all carried with them as don't destroy on load and were uh, set inactive when that scene wasn't about that character but they were there and that these these don't destroy on load things carried forward through the scenes. I don't know if that you know that's its own issue, uh, uh, but a, a don't destroy on load is a way to carry stuff from one scene to another, and presumably then they would be all updated mm -hmm. and uh, and carried forward. I don't know. The other thing is, of course, scriptable objects, which are a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> okay, any questions, comments, suggestions for Donato? And uh, no, okay. Um, Abby, are you here? Abby? I don't see Abby. Okay, uh, Spencer. Mr. Campbell, you're up. All right. Um, so I last time I was kind of working on doing the UI redesign and are just uh, changing the prefabs mostly to work as a top down view. And I decided to not work on that for the time being and just uh, finish up wrapping up the gameplay mechanics. So in this case, I'm in a pretty good place i think i think most of the the coding side is is essentially done uh, i have the perks working as i want them to i have a way that you can uh buy a perk where you have access to all the towers at all times instead of them being randomly assigned each round you can buy powers is that what you said yeah yeah cool. so there's one that you can buy uh well you, you buy it and then you can access every tower every round instead of them just uh, sometimes not being available um and then the only things that I'm going to need to tweak is just difficulty settings, which is all uh, global variable type things. So that shouldn't be too hard to deal with. Uh, and then I have to do the main menu and uh, add some scripts for allowing the user to reroll maps to find whatever map they want. OK, cool. Um, any questions, comments? Yours is the. Uh... Tower defense, right? The, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for Spencer? 
We're quiet today. Devin, you want to go? Devin, 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 Devin. Not here. Peter, Kluki. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. All right, awesome. Okay, sharing my screen. All right, um, so one thing I wanted to do was add grass, but um, I, I, I can figure out how to make the grass uh, generate on everything. But for some reason, like trying to get the grass to generate at certain height levels was an absolute pain to do. Um, so I kind of ran to a roadblock there and I had to kind of give up. Um, and I, 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 can, I can show you my code if you want. Um, it, um, it, are you doing it with an object placer or are you? No, I, I was doing it uh, by like modifying the terrain data or I can, I can, uh, sh hold on. If I can, I can probably share my screen if you want. Um, let me see, hold on. There we go. Uh, so yeah, basically I, what I was doing was, where was that? Basically um, creating like a new map and then um, sampling the height at various um, like, uh, X and Y coordinates, testing if the height is like lower than sea level. And then if it is lower than sea level, I will uh, place grass. If not, um, it won't. But basically I, I, I got this uh, this code from, I guess it was like a Unity form or something where someone had run into this, a similar problem. Um, I don't know. I, I've, I, was, I kind of was, was playing with it for like a really long time. I wasn't able to figure it out. Um, I, I'm, I, there probably is a better way to do it as well. Um, I'm not completely sure. You're actually modifying the the uh, terrains data. The, uh, basically, I'm so I have the I have the terrain itself, which I, I have here, and then I basically just modify the terrain data. Okay. And then set a detail layer, like a, a new detail layer, and, and then use use the math that I created. Okay. Um, I've never played with the terrain data at, data at that level so I, I i can't really comment on it but um you know if you make your density low enough so that the the grass was pretty patchy the fact that it was everywhere wouldn't make much difference would it yeah i i, I guess so um I, I it's just kind of like an aesthetics thing like i i'd, I'd like the the grass to only generate you know, um, or a certain kind of grass to only generate in the water, and a certain kind of grass to only generate on land. But I, I suppose I could do it that way. I wouldn't. I guess it wouldn't really. Um, so this it. is this is a doubly nested loop on I and J there. Yep. It, it, are are those the are those the points within the terrain? And yes. So so you're assigning different new map IJs to six and zero. And six is going to make grass, and zero is not. And Correct. But yeah. what you're seeing when you get done with this is that there's grass everywhere. Um, it's either that. It's either so. It's either one of three things. Um, it's either grass everywhere, grass nowhere, or grass in like very very strange locations. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so again, I I spent like you know a couple hours. Uh, playing with that and uh, i don't know i wasn't able to really get anywhere okay um, there's probably a better way to do this as well i get i probably just take will take a lot more research and stuff I, I i i again i haven't played with the with physically modifying with directly modifying the terrain data so i i can't comment on that uh one of you has the object placer and grass is an object just like anything else and could be scattered around the terrain with the object placer that I believe, oh. who, who was it who posted that? To, oh, that, 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 that was me actually. I actually, that, you that, actually. That, never, that never actually crossed my mind. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, uh, grass is not that expensive as yeah. an object because it's just a quad and uh, uh, so that might be a way to do it. I don't know. Just a bunch of little quads designed to orient towards the camera placed wherever you wanted them to but yeah. oh, okay it, so okay um and then the other thing i did was i did a redesign of my enemies because they were a little hard to see so now they're just like these ominous 
floating eyeball Ooh, things with cool. particles. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I, I was that. definitely aiming for a more creepy kind of look. Um, <laughs> yeah. This is what I did when I kind of gave up on the grass. I was like, oh, I want to do something. Um, and I also added some rocks as well, as you can see in the scene view. Do they have colliders? Uh, the rocks? Yeah. Uh, no, not yet. So that's something I want to. Are they object placed or are they part yes. of the map? Uh, they're object placed. Okay. So you could put colliders on them because yep. uh, the detail map with, with uh, the detail map with the terrain uh, does not make rocks with colliders, which is very annoying. Okay. I mean, I mean, they're there and they're pretty and everything, but you can walk right through them. Yeah. And even if the prefab has a collider, it doesn't seem to carry them forward with details. But interesting. Okay. Well, that looks cool. I, right. I, I like your enemy. That's that's definitely very cool. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Donato loves the enemy design, and the eyeball makes it noticeable. That's cool. Yep. Any any other questions, comments, suggestions? All right. Well, next, David Defumalo, you're up. Yep. Uh, it was a busy week, like we were saying before class. <laughs> uh, didn't get a whole lot done physically, but I'm kind of in the final stages of implementing in the scripts I wrote kind of at the beginning of the semester, because now that I think I I have my dialogue functions working, and after I kind of do all that, that's probably going to take a couple of days. My goal is to try to start uh, like uh, implementing uh, actions and reactions based on like you saying something or an object in an NPC's area. I was watching videos of uh it was like an example of your character the user character like collecting co coins bringing it back to an npc and it like uh it breaks down a wall so you can start moving into different areas and i was hoping i before the end before demo day i can implement at least one or two things like that so that would be cool talking. that would be cool but yeah so as of right now it's just implementing my scripts of dialogue and then looking into stuff like that Okay. Did you use Bracky's dialogue system? I, think you uh, meant... I, I didn't. I actually found oh, who it was some random YouTube video that I found that had like 20 viewers on it. And his was a little more uh, easier to understand. It's easier to implement uh actions like i was talking about with the wall where he kind of shows uh scripts to do stuff like that and I, I thought if i used that it'd be easier down the line versus brackies was just kind of straight sending text to the ui and showcasing okay. which, which is good but i like i said i want to be able to uh do something like that down the line so it, once i find it i'll definitely put it in my report but okay yeah don't lose that link yeah yeah it's probably in your browser history somewhere okay so any questions comments uh uh suggestions all right uh will you're up I'm not. I'm not hurrying you. If you have comments, questions, suggestions, please pipe up. But uh, we'll move along if that's the way it goes. So, Will, you're up. There you go. Demo. Okay. Um, I've got. Let's see. Um. Seems I um. <clears throat> I implemented your uh, game of life script. Oh, cool. Game of life. Okay. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it looks good. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to basically get this to update the, well, not update, but set the um, material colors on my, uh, the cube grids that I showed last week. Um, 
And I'm in the process of figuring out how to do that. And it's a little bit tricky. Um, and the thing is, is that I'd like to not necessarily use Game of Life, which has to update over time, but just use one of Wolfram's like regular CA rules. Um, and Wolfram, you mentioned Wolfram. You're looking yeah, at Stephen his Wolfram. Book. Yeah, no, he's 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 the the absolute compulsive yeah. <laughs> publisher of every cellular automata in the world. Uh, do you have his big book? I have the PDF. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so for anyone not familiar with the game of life, it's a really simple cellular automata where you have a three by three neighborhood around where the character is. And they're very simple rules of replication. A character with, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, less than three and more than five neighbors around it dies and an empty cell with exactly three neighbors is born. And so you start off with some array of characters and each cell looks at its neighbors and decides whether it survives or whether it uh, uh, dies and it, the empty cells all look at their neighbors and decide whether they're born or not. And uh, it's called Game of Life because it kind of looks like the way bacteria grows in uh, petri dishes, <laughs> and uh, and it it's a an arena that uh, a lot of people have spent a, con a considerable amount of time making very fancy um, uh, uh, devices that are, you know, they're called spaceships that like move across the, the, the world. Uh, I, I have a video posted on this on the YouTube that you can look at from a previous class. Um, but uh, the originator of this, a guy named Conway, pointed out that this a was a model of the most efficient uh, parallel computer where each cell is a computer with one bit that it is in charge of and it looks at its neighbor bits to make its decisions and he designed various computer like structures, wires and switches and NAND gates and, you know, the whole nine yards of things that you need to design a computer that would work in this. Uh, nobody has ever implemented his parallel computer, but it's a really interesting idea. And, uh, and it's all cellular automata and, uh, and uh, done with the game of life. Uh, if, if you search for game of life on the web, you find a lot of obsessive people doing things. So that's very cool. Okay. Any, anything else you want to say? I'm sorry if I preempted your. No, no worries. No worries. Um, yeah, I mean, have, I have some code um, that I, I can go through it. Um, shoot. I'll just leave it there. I have some code that I'm working on, but I'll just talk about it next week. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, one suggestion that I might make to you, like you're starting off with a random arrangement and uh, that that's great. Yeah, I think that's true, Matt. If one could figure out ECS and dots, <laughs> ECS and dots are another, another, uh, Oh, you guys are funny. The game of life is one of the only games I'm bad at playing. You guys are too funny. Um, but a, a, a useful feature of a game of life is the ability to uh, start with a particular arrangement because some of these uh, interesting layouts are very complex with like hundreds and hundreds of entities that have to be defined in exactly the right place. and uh, I can point you to a website that has these uh, uh, defined in in terms of a checkerboard, and and if you could implement the ability to read them in and start from that configuration, that would be great. 
the other thing that of course is fun is giving the user the ability to point and click and define where a cell is going to be and then you can start the simulation and they can then play with designing their own and both of those features are are uh would would make a a, a really good game of life so any comments questions suggestions for uh for will here with his game of life that Peter's not that good at. Poor Peter. No. And uh, what Matt's referring to with the ECS and DOT system is uh, the ECS and the DOT system, e ECS is a whole different way of representing, what do they call it? Instead of object oriented, it's data oriented. And uh, uh, it, it uh, it's designed in a way that takes advantage of the job system that we talked about with threading, and uh, so it becomes it becomes a parallel computer in that it can utilize different cores in much more efficient ways. And in my experience, it's really hard. But uh, have you used it, Matt? Hello. You're muted. Your answer. Uh, no, I just read about it a little bit. I haven't yeah. actually tried it. I did it, the same when it. It, it looks. It, I've I've played with their demos, and it looks really powerful. However, it's it's a whole different way of thinking about things. And of course, anytime we have to change how we think, uh, life gets hard. Okay. Any any other any comments questions for Will? We go on to Dorothy. Ms. Harris, you're up. Sure. So I got a couple things working. So I have my normal if it loads up uh, thing where you can still do this. Wow, I'll just go random. Sure. Um, and then you get into this mode. I have a little animation. All the animations I will add aren't great, but they're the best I got. And then of course moving, it has a different one. And I have it flipping now. So now you can flip and move. Oh, cool. You can't see this, but I'm going to click Q and it pulls up my menu. Okay. <laughs> I got the menu with Q now. And okay. I have item storage. And then I have a little thing for adding um, equipment to my character, which that isn't set up, but I can pick up items here and put them in the menu and they stay. Very cool. We move this. Then you can also delete things from your menu. Um, I do have a weird bug <laughs> that I'm not sure why it does it. Um, let me find just the game scene where if I don't have the menu open when I pick up the first item, it doesn't show it. It is okay. there because if I go grab this one, suddenly there's two. Okay, yeah. Uh, and I don't know why, because also if I have the menu open and grab the first item, it's there. So I don't, it's definitely in, and like in the, when I do it in like not maximized play mode, like it shows that it got the object. So yep. I don't know, I don't know why that happens, but that's just a small thing. That's so uh, the order, the order in which things happen in uh, uh, there, things are going on in the update function, right? Yeah. Um, we have no control over the order in which update functions on different objects are run. Yeah. So it may be that the update function of the pickup is happening after the update function of the inventory. And so it's not appearing visibly, although it's happened behind the scenes. And the one tool that we have to, uh, to fix this is the late update function. Uh, because uh, uh, Unity runs all the update functions and then it runs all the late update functions. And this is uh, particularly useful with adjusting cameras because you move your character and then you point the camera at them. 
and if the camera's update function runs before the player's update function run, the camera points at the player and then the player moves because the update functions occur in an order we have no control over. So with the cameras, you put the camera's movement in the late update function, and then in the update, the character is guaranteed to have moved, and then the late update is guaranteed to have to point at where the character has moved to. And so it might be that if you fiddle with your inventory's update system and made it a late update, instead of just an update and that's the only change you make with it maybe that'll fix it i don't know yeah thank you um i also i'm hoping to get just that inventory thing working and then also i i'm hoping because i've been putting off actually just making the world that you're going to be in because yeah. that's not much of a coding thing that's more of just placing pictures but i'm thinking it's uh, it's coming to the end of the semester it's probably time i do that so i'm thinking that's what i'm gonna have for next week okay um i also found really cute sound that i want to put as background noise <laughs> okay that's great you <laughs> duck, your duck will quack hopefully okay cool and that's, I think, it for, for me this week. And and this is all going to run on a phone too, right? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Okay. That's hard. Likely no. Okay. Well, if it runs in the editor, that's all I, that's the only way I can play it anyway. So, okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for um, Dorothy? Um, let's see, an object in the inventory might not be instantiated until the first time you open the menu. That's possible too, yeah. I don't know if this is a, would be a way to test what Matt just said, but it'd be interesting to see what happened if you like picked up the object with your menu closed, opened it, because then you said it wasn't showing, closed it and reopened it to see if it would, if that would make it appear. Um, I don't know if that would prove what Matt was referring to, but yeah, I tried that. It doesn't. It doesn't come back. It's just gone. Never mind. Pick up the next item. Interesting. Donato asks: Is there any particular tutorial you use to save your character's data? Gotta find one for mine to save their health between fights. Um, I can look. I didn't. I kind of. <laughs> Why a lot of this went is because a lot of the tutorials I found were like kind of half of what I wanted, but also not really at all what I wanted. So I'd take parts from them. And then also I just went to like the Unity Learn page and um, just like found other like ways to coding lines to use. So it was kind of a, there wasn't a specific tutorial. I kind of meshed a bunch of things together. Um, but I, I don't know. I could send you what I did if you want. And um, uh, there's also a, a one of the advanced tutorials from 312 uh, in persistent data. Uh, and it, it uses a, a stream writer to write to the persistent to the there's a storage cache in Unity that stores stuff from one play of the game to another and from one scene to another. And, and it's a pretty simple tutorial. Uh, I'll send you a link to it. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's see. Good. Hacky fix automatically toggle the inventory open and closed when the scene loads, LOL. Yep, okay. That sounds like a hacky fix, but why not? All right. Well, let's any comments, questions, suggestions. If not, Matt, you're up. All right. Let me get the uh, screen share going here. Um, OK, here we go. Oh, zooms in my way. There we go. OK, so I, I worked on water last time. Now I have trees. Oh, uh, cool. 
I wrote my own um, object placement script. I looked at Peter's, but it was geared around train objects. And since I'm using custom meshes, it didn't actually work out. Um, so what I ended up doing is I'm getting the uh, vertex array from the mesh. And I'm just picking, basically picking a random vertex and then using the, the, uh, the world point that corresponds to to put the trees there. No colliders yet, but um, that's forthcoming. But there, you have like a, um, find the, uh, so the script's called Populator. You can pick how many um, scenery objects, it can be any prefab, not just trees, um, be placed in there. The minimum height will be spawned at, so you can avoid water somewhat. Um, and then you can have an array of prefabs the chance of being spawned so you can like have them some of them be rare and then you have like a height offset so you can pull them down below the surface if you want so you can like have the trees make you know clip into the mesh instead of being hovering on top in some spots or whatever that's cool so it's something we're calling like colliders for it so uh I, I... Do you have a sense for how many of these objects are actually getting spawned in the world? Um, it's a maximum of 20 per chunk. Um, usually less. 20, and, per, um, 20 per, per, th this is the endless terrain, right? So, yes. So it, um, makes, it makes 20 trees per little square. Okay, so that's not a lot. Uh, that, I was just going to say uh, uh, object pools might be uh, a, a good approach with these things too. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's you know the next step to make this more efficient is just have, you know, four hundred trees in your pools and and uh, move them around as you needed to. Yeah, I've been kind of thinking about how to optimize it. Um, that that's. One thing I was kind of contemplating, I don't know if I'll get around it or not. Yeah. But another thing is like, so when the map is generated, um, so each of the terrain chunks, it's putting the trees as a child in the transform. Yeah. So I might be able to also just when chunks are unloaded, um, just make sure I clean the trees up also. Yeah. So as you cycle through the chunks, it has to generate the mesh for the train anyway, which is going to be more expensive than placing prefabs, I would think. So it might just be premature optimization at that point, if I can just do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Well, that looks really cool. Um, uh, um, I, I definitely like the array of trees whose probabilities are adjustable so that you can kind of, that that's great. Yeah. And it's work for like boulders and stuff too, or whatever else you want to throw down there. So let's see, Elijah says, Donato, it seems like you might be able to use do not destroy on load. Okay, you guys are talking something else. Um, all right. Uh, any comments, questions, suggestions for our endless terrainer? I've got a question. Um, so I believe your terrain, when you said that when you like leave it, and it like kind of goes away and then you come back, it'll be like the same terrain. Is that the same for like the trees? Will they be placed in the same spot or is that not being saved? That isn't, um, it would be ideal. Um, it could be achieved by using it, like if you could like capture the same random seed oh, and yeah. then reuse it again, but you'd have to make sure you stored that right. in some way. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if if that was something you were doing or if you wanted to do. That's cool though. I would like to ideally, but probably if it's this late in the semester, I don't know if that's necessarily realistic. <laughs> I got other and, things. I and besides, heard. who's ever going to notice that, Elijah? <laughs> it's <laughs> like, you know, I mean, you're walking across this terrain and the trees have moved when you come back to the same spot years later. Listen, when I'm okay. navigating and I'm like, listen, I got to find the cluster of tree that looks like a porcupine and I can't find my porcupine tree, I'm going to be I, lost. I think you're right. I think you're absolutely right. But that could be a feature rather than a bug. Beavers got it. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, any any other comments, questions, suggestions? All right, um, Mr. Howe, uh, and you. You guys here? Okay, yeah, it's working. Sorry. Um, so I've been doing a little bit of everything this week. Um, it seems like just couldn't keep my focus on one thing at the same time, but I can show you what I have going on. Um, so I can, maybe. Maybe. I just got to find the right screen. What? Okay, I just have too much up right now. Just give me one second. Uh, maybe. All right, can you guys see? Yeah. So I made a uh, start screen. Check and play. It's kind of cheesy, but I also kind of like it. Um, so play button works. And yeah, right now I've been working on, um, yeah, combat, but it's kind of buggy. The arrow shoot, they don't delete. There's also a random chest spawner that's in the process. Well, that works, but it spawns every one in every 13 times. Um, I added a boost function to my character. I'm working on getting that connected to the slider I made up top. I don't know if you can see. Um, yeah, there's a slider up top there, a little NOS bottle. I thought that was fun. Um, but yeah, the boost works. It's just, yeah, but it's a work in progress. I've been trying to take on too many things at once, I think, and should probably just, uh, <laughs> take a step back and finish one thing at a time before I do a million things at once. Okay. But that's, that's where I'm at right now. Well, it, it looks good. Things are moving around appropriately and arrows are flying and arrows uh, are flying. I, I created a couple other uh, weapon uh, sprites too. I have a um, a joust. I thought that would be fun for like a melee weapon because, you know, whale on a skateboard, he could uh, run people through with the joust. Um, there's also a magic wand in here somewhere. Yeah, right there. Made a wand. Um, yeah. Oh, I also made a uh, death screen. Let's see it's very basic it's not um yeah you died. <laughs> died yeah that's yep. very very informative yep that so so that's where i'm at right now okay any comments questions suggestions for our whale on a skateboard uh i have something uh the zapon um i saw the main menu screen looked blurry and i think it's because the way you have it set up where if you click on the like sprite um wherever you have it on the right hand side there should be um a i think it's let me look on mine i think it's called filter um let me just double check if i'm getting this right yeah filter mode if you change that to point no filter and then make and then if you go down to compression and make that none i think that's and once you apply that that should make it so it's all clear. would that that's be on it, the actual image itself or where uh it would be on like the like the sprite, you know, where you have like, well, I don't know where you put your sprites. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain it without physically showing it. But like on the actual like sprite in your folders or wherever, you just click on it. It should be on the right hand side somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I'll definitely look. That would be awesome. Good tip. Thank you. Any any other comments, questions, suggestions for our cheesy start screen? <laughs> I love that you admit that. Um, Peter, you're I kind of thought it fit the whole vibe of my game, so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does, it, and uh, it's not at all out of place. It's perfect. So Peter, with the cars. Uh, yeah, great. So um, this week I spent time getting the rest of my cars uh, ready to go. Here I have uh, the four cars I'll be using um, for the project as promised i have a garbage truck which uh, can't move i need to move a little bit to the left let's do 310 um so i have my garbage truck i have my bmw uh x5 it's like a 2008 model uh sports suv and then i have <clears throat> a sports car and then i have a race car as well which is um uh this is like this is like motorsport i think i forget the exact competition this type of car uh is in but 
either way, uh, I spent time getting all of these cards ready to go and they all have, I'll just open up the prefabs here uh, with each one of them. Um, they all have uh, colliders that um, are responsible for the hitboxes on the cars. They each came with meshes, um, but I decided to get rid of those and kind of go with my own colliders. I know these are kind of boxy and, and uh, That's elementary, a good idea. but I went with my own colliders. Um, and then uh, it, it pretty much just each prefab will have all the chassis parts, all the wheel objects that hold the wheel transform and the wheel colliders. Um, wheel colliders, I used uh, wheel collider uh, unity object. And then each one has an overhead cam and the car HUD. And for each one of these, um, the sports car, SUV, everything. Um, here's a sports car, the colors uh, changed now. Um, and as for the SUV car, uh, here you go, same thing. Um, so I just spent time getting all these. They, they all have a particle system as well. Um, and they're pretty much all ready to go. Uh, I'm going to continue to work on the HUD stuff, uh, maybe come up with a timing mechanism like I talked about two weeks ago uh, in the meantime. But um, yeah, I'm going to start moving into the physics here in like, I think, uh, three days. Is that what you're, you're buying a package of your body yet? Um, three days it goes on sale. So oh boy. Okay. I'm still waiting. Just in time. It's the way they make cars, you know, just in time delivery. Uh, you yeah. Know, they're, they're, yeah. They're making some car in Detroit and they're waiting for a generator to come from Hong Kong or. Yeah. You know, or place. transistors for modern oh, transistors. Yeah. Okay. Well, those cars all look very cool. <laughs> they are definitely high test cars. Uh, show the truck. Yeah. Oh, that's great. There's a the garbage truck. That's great. Um, it was tough getting the colliders for these. I wish they had, uh, I, I probably could have gotten more creative with how I did it. Um, but yeah, here's the garbage truck. It is a cool garbage truck. I was able to, uh, drive it around a little bit and handles like you would expect. Um, <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. It'll be a cool car to drive. Okay. Yeah. Are, are you going to make them pick up garbage on the race? <laughs> that would be pretty cool. If I get past the, uh, physics engine, I could certainly add some like, interesting uh what would you call it? game mechanics in there where yeah i guess yeah. you maybe could shave off some points if you picked up trash on the side of the road or something or shave off time excuse me yeah that's funny um so you, you know your replacement of the mesh colliders with your own boxes is exactly the way to go with these cars uh, based on the fact that that's the way unity does it with their car if you look at you know the unity standard assets car yeah it it has just a bunch of box colliders on it okay and so yeah that's what i modeled it off of yeah. um i feel like the mesh colliders that these come with might i just might run into issues with it well you would uh, down the line yeah first they'd have to be convex and second they'd have to be fewer than 256 triangles and you know there are a whole bunch of issues that go with yeah. using mesh colliders and they're they're way laggier than a box Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, we look forward to the physics. Yes, that is in, the, in that's two the, days. That's the end goal. So okay, cool. Peter is is uh, spending some cash to buy a high test physics system for cars that uh, uh, he guarantees will be the real deal, and so we look forward to seeing the real deal. Okay. <laughs> Any other comments, questions, suggestions? Uh, okay, so we're seeing a whole bunch of stuff on the suggestions about blurry pixels. So way to go, Donato. You've solved everyone's problem. That's good. And sharing here, Pete, so that we can go sure. on. Uh, Roshan, you're up. All right. Share my screen. All right. So I was kind of all over the place this week, but I think the most notable thing that I did was I added in a how to uh, canvas, whatever. So I'll show you guys that I got. 
this thing going. So that's just like a basic overview of how to play. And then I have this one that kind of explains how to move. And I'll probably have one more that explains like the haptics and the enemies. I don't have that yet. So the next button just goes back to the start. Um, cool. Yeah. So that, that's a critical that element that. of games that uh, uh, all of us designing games leave out because in the process of designing the game, we know exactly how it works. And when we give it to somebody else, they don't know how it works. And so having a how to play is critical. Yeah, good. Yeah, so I've got that. I, uh, I was working with Xcode uh, today and yesterday and it just doesn't wanna work. So I think I'm gonna have to update Unity again, which doesn't sound great. Are you using 2021? I am. Okay, there's an LTS of 2021 now, which long-term support, which is always a good sign because when they you know, commit to long-term support on something, they feel like they've flushed the bugs out of it pretty well. Yeah, uh, well. But I think, I think in, in <laughs> I, I think I admonished you to back up, back up, back up before uh, up, upgrading your game to to the LTS. Yeah. Okay. Battery level panic. <laughs> What's that mean, Matt? No. Okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for? Oh, Roshan, I'm really sorry about Xcode. That's a pain. I don't, I don't use it, so I I can't really help you. Oh, her laptop battery is low. Okay, haha. -ha. We better get going then. Any comments, questions, suggestions? Apart from it's time to plug in your battery. Um, Elijah, you're up. Okie dokie. Let me stop what I was doing because that may break things. Um, so I've got three, three different things I would like to show you. Um, I'm going to save the one that I like feedback. Like, I mean, you can add feedback on all of it, but I will ask specifically be seeing if you'll have any suggestions. I'll save that for last. Um, so uh, I have, okay, so I have this, that was the first thing you saw. I have this kind of like pause menu, so it like pauses everything. Um, so you can either resume or I have this checkpoint system. Will it crash? Well, it won't crash. Excellent. <laughs> so to demonstrate, I have, there's a few places where like the portals will like glitch out and you just ping pong back and forth between them. and so. To prevent to easy way to get out, I made these checkpoints. So I made these little pillars uh, around the levels. Um, and if you go up to it and you press E, you kind of like a little still a little flame. Um, and they're all linked together. So like if I were to go to this one, it will ignite that one, but it will turn that one off because this one is selected. Um, and so if you respawn at the checkpoint, it spawn. There's a little. Each one has a little. Uh, a little point where it 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 will spawn you um yeah so like it spawns me in front of this one now so those are darted throughout the map um in case you get stuck and it's just good so that's one thing that's and very then, cool yeah and then i redid my doors so that um <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I read it, I read it the door so that like it requires multiple buttons to be pressed. Um, because I, I think I would like that in some, whoa, something. I think I would like that in some other levels. So you see, it requires all three buttons, um, to be pressed. 
if for the door to open. So that's cool. Um, and then to demonstrate the other one, I have to go over here just a minute. Uh, I was working on like being able to, okay, I also have to fix the staircase because it's very hard to get up the staircase. Um, I was working on like having the objects being able to be thrown through the portals and then rewind those um, because the system I had before was just like recording its position, um, like, it, like it's a physical position. And so if the player were to have like remove the portals completely because I was just recording, it would like the object would go and then it would just jump to the next place, regardless of the portals. Like it wouldn't be like going through the portals again, if that makes sense. So I decided instead of recording the like the position and the rotation, just to record the velocity of the object. That way I can like apply reverse velocity to the object. That way it will it will actually travel through the portals and be actually teleported. So that sort of works, but this is where I would kind of like some assistance if you have any ideas. So let me demonstrate really quickly what I mean. Ah, uh, I fell. I'm sorry. One 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 one. Uh, I should have set the checkpoint. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. Checkpoint. Okay. So we're gonna throw throw this. Oh, okay. okay. We're gonna throw this through the portal, and it should have. I was recording there as well. Ah. Oh. Crash. <laughs> uh, it looks like he it looks like he locked up there. Elijah, I think you're gone. I don't know if you can hear us, but I think he just messaged me saying uh cuz I was just asking him about this game. He just messaged me saying that his computer crashed. Yeah, no, that's, completely. that's what it looks like. Um, I, let's see what happens if I... Set this, what happens? Do I get the screen back? All right, so I think I have ours. Oh, where are we? Now I've lost the, I've lost the screen. Okay. Elijah, you're back? You're back. Okay. Yes. Okay. Here you go. So, uh, yeah, clearly, I'll uh, now we've lost him again. Okay. Um, well, while he's coming back to life, uh, oh, there you are. So, Elijah, to make you feel any better, I had a, a hard crash uh, ten, like 10 minutes before class in 312. I had a hard crash that was so hard that it took my computer 45 minutes to come back to life again. And I have no, I, it must have been, I had a lot of Unity games open at the same time because I was trying to, you know, load them all up so that I wouldn't have to have the pauses of loading in, in class. And I think I must have overheated something inside the box. And it had to wait until that something cooled down enough, which was, you know, deep into class. And my backup laptop 
you know, back up, back up, back up. My backup laptop didn't have the lesson plan on it. And so, so yeah, I, I, um, congratulations. So uh, you want to finish your story, rewind objects through portals with velocity instead of uh, all the transform. And so, yeah, I guess to finish, to finish, good news though, guys, it, I don't, it wasn't the game that crashed. My computers just have, I think I have a memory leak or something, or like maybe my graphics card. I don't know. It's not the game. It's my actual computer. Okay. Maybe worse, but I don't know. Um, <laughs> What was I saying? Oh, so the velocity. So if you were to throw an object in sideways through a portal, and let's say it comes out of the exit portal and it comes out, it's recording like a sideways velocity and then an up velocity. So if you were to re if you were to like move the port um the entrance portal and you like have the object rewind, it's just applying like it applies the velocity weird so that like sometimes I guess I'm, I'm trying to remember how to replicate it. There's a scenario where say the, the object is supposed to come out of the portal coming straight up because it recorded a sideways velocity as soon as it exits the portal and it should go straight up, it just goes sideways immediately after exiting because I'm recording a sideways velocity, if that makes any sense. So it does. and and it <laughs> it sounds like there are many many possible failure modes for uh, the rewind of an object thrown through a portal. Yeah. If you move the portals around in between the time that you're trying to rewind it, because whatever you record, like so, you know, if if you throw it through a horizontal portal and it's supposed to come up through a vertical one. And then you change the second portal to horizontal, and no matter what you record, it's going to be wrong. Right. Uh, so I'm thinking what I may do is I may do a mix of like the road record the rotation and velocity, or maybe like some sort of force added to it. That way, because when you go through a portal, it it does automatically fix the rotation. So if I just like add a force behind that object and keep make sure that and let the portal rotate it the way it's supposed to, I think that will work. Yeah. But I just have to figure that out. And uh, uh, given given the late date in the semester, <laughs> how important is this mechanic for your game? I'm going to build levels before I really worry about that. <laughs> I mean, it, it is it is of there, there are many unanswered questions in Unity. Uh, for yeah. instance, the character controller. How do you make a character controller that can deal with, uh, a, well, the camera for a character controller that can deal with the fact that sometimes you put your back to a wall? What do you do with the camera? Does it clip through the wall? Does it zoom up close to the character from behind what do you do with that and there there are many different solutions none of them are perfect and mm -hmm. they all have problems and I, I this this will only occur if you move a portal after you've thrown the object and want to rewind it yeah and it uh, a a way, way to deal with this would be to make it illegal. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That's the simple fix. Yeah. Uh, uh, Forrest says uh, you could put a disclaimer objects react unexpectedly when interacting with both time and portal manipulation. So there you go. That, that may be uh, the way to go, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, it's, it's a, a really interesting problem that requires a whole lot of thought. Uh, to figure out a what you actually want it to do, and b how you're going to get it to do that. Uh, yeah, uh, great, great questions. Any any other any other comments, questions, su any suggestions for Elijah how to solve this uh, conundrum? I may have to go with uh, what Forrest mentioned there. Just. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, don't do it. I mean, you could always make moving portals illegal when 
the time recorder is I don't know or, or if it I mean if, you know if it's part of your mechanic that you're going to throw something through a portal to damage something where it comes out and you want to be able I yeah I don't know I don't know I keep dropping my pen here all right any comments questions suggestions for uh, this tour de force of the portal time reversal world portal doesn't have time reversal so this is beyond what what those those people might have wrestled with it and said oh explode the player <laughs> they try yeah sure matt yeah, absolutely uh and forest has got one here okay um so finally pride of place and i think i did this to you last week too uh where'd he go oh, i'm here okay forest there you are okay I, I'm sorry to make you pride of place. Oh, that's all right. Oh, Peter, I uh, a black hole that sucks everyone in. I'm not allowed to share screen. Oh, I turned that off when we were trying to get rid of Elijah's share screen. Go ahead. You got it. Okay, so I don't have a ton to show. Uh, Capstone is coming to a close for me this week, but um, I did manage to fix the bug where um, when the spiker is supposed to be invincible, uh, it will now recognize that he's invincible on all screens. So I can't kill him while he's big, but I can kill him while he's small. Um, also, thanks to Donato for pointing out that um, uh, how to make the sprite not blurry when it's puffed up because that looks so much better now. Okay. Any comments, questions, suggestions for the multiplayer? We got. Stick Arena. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any any anything else on for any of us. Okay, so 